and I will say greetings, friends. Welcome back to another episode of Dreamscapes. Today we have our friend Katie from Indiana. Hi, Katie. Hi. Hello. And Katie's going to share a dream with us. Uh, as per my usual process, I'm just going to sit quietly and listen for uh, for the description beginning to end. And then we'll, we'll go back through it again and then we'll try and uh, make sense of it together. So I'm ready whenever you are. Okay, so the dream I had, um, I dreamt about, I got in trouble with my mom for um, trying to contact this person that I'm not on good terms with right now, and um, trying to get some of their friends to say, say some, well, the, the friends um, that I contacted said that they were going to tell this person how much I cared about them. And I got in trouble for that, too. Um, after that, there was like this cutscene type of thing. Well, um... Well, I think I was, um, I eventually was talking to this person that I'm not on good terms with, and we were friends again. Yeah, that's what I was saying. It seems like the dream is pretty concrete in terms of this is what you want to have happen, and your dream is is giving it to you in, in a kind of hopeful sense of, uh, yeah, look, everything's fine. Uh, cause, cause that's what you really hope for. That's what you really want to accomplish. Um, yeah, in terms of the interpretation, I mean, does that make sense to you that this is just a pretty straightforward dream about what you hope will happen? Yeah. Okay. Does it, um, does that description or summary leave out anything important or does it seem kind of directly related uh what do you think oh, that's not pretty pretty accurate okay good deal um i think the more interesting not interesting but maybe more important conversation is to maybe talk a little bit around this the issue itself are you interested in doing that yeah okay um ah, where to start uh, have you as much as you want, let me, let me, let me back this up. You're, um, your your uh, best friend, uh, boy or girl. Um, they're, um, I'm the trans man. Oh, fair enough. And the, uh, the person you have lost contact with that does want to talk to you currently, uh, how, how would you describe that person? Um, what do you mean by that? Uh, I guess what I'm asking, is this a potential romantic interest? Um, yeah, they won't, but they had already rejected me before everything happened, so I'm just fine with being just friends with them. Okay, gotcha. That, that was, I had, I had a sense that that was likely, and I, I wanted to confirm, I didn't want to, I don't know. I, it's, it's a little awkward to ask people that sometimes. And I, I feel like I, pr I feel like I'm prying, but I think it is important. Um, there's, I think there's definitely a part of you that maybe at least a part of you that is still hoping for that possibility. And it seems like that's a big driving force of, of trying to hang on to this connection is having difficulty letting go of that really. I mean, you say, and I believe you, and I, and I think it's true that you're fine with just being friends, but that seed of, hopefulness for a stronger connection something more intimate is is still inside of you does that does that feel right does that sound and not really because i have a girlfriend right now so. oh fair enough fair enough i might have been reaching reaching on that one um yeah yeah no problem um yeah that's tough have you have you considered the idea that really there just might be no way to fix this, that there may be a fundamental 
incompatibility with this person and it's just never going to work out. What, what, what comes to mind when you think about that idea of just letting it go and you move on with your life? Um, and as much as I want to do that, I just can't. What do you mean by can't? What, what comes to mind when you think about that happening or, or committing to that path? I just feel like I'm not going to get all the emotions that I feel. Hmm. Until there's a solution that we can both be happy with. Hmm. It's an interesting way to way to way to phrase it. A solution we can both be happy with. Um, that's tough when you have, say, conflicting goals. Uh, your goal may be to reconnect. This person's goal may be not to reconnect, and it may never be possible to change either one of your desires in that regard. Uh, so then the next question becomes, how do you live with the results? The, the idea that you have a frustrated goal that, you know, it's, it's not that they're a bad person. They didn't do anything wrong morally. You know, it's just these, these feelings that can't be changed. You want a connection. They don't, maybe time will fix it and maybe it won't. And, and, uh, since you can't, control other people so, so in the sense of, of causing them to change what they want. Um, the, the, the only possible path, the, the, the only, the only option available is to find a way to be okay with not getting the outcome that you prefer. Does, is it, does that make sense? Mm, no, that's what I want to say that. I didn't realize at the time why they didn't want to be friends, and I really regret that. And that I was blinded by that. I was kind of in denial. Sure. So at, at the time that they distanced themselves from you, you didn't realize why they were upset, that they didn't, you didn't um, have a clear understanding of how they felt in response to your behavior? Yeah, I originally thought that they were just mad because I gave, I nicely gave them constructive criticism after the performance. And I didn't think it was how often I texted them at all. Oh, yeah, that's that's uh, very often a mismatch in, I want to say, the personality and communication style. Some people love to send literally a thousand texts a day and that's just how they do and other people are like that's too many i don't have time for that i don't have the mental energy to put into that much communication so there's like i was saying before it's not that anyone did anything wrong it's not that your style is bad or their style is 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 um dis distanced uh necessarily but it's it's um uh, i like to explain it where my wife and i are both very solitary people we are married and we are committed and we love each other and, and we would do anything for each other and we support each other. But there are some days where 13 hours straight, I don't talk to her, uh, but I'm not ignoring her. She's not ignoring me. We're just busy with our own things. We can sit in the same room for hours at a time and not say one word to each other, just a comfortable silence. We're both very quiet, introverted people that enjoy a lot of time alone and it works for us. Whereas if I'd married someone who was hyper social, they need constant communication and, and interaction. I couldn't keep up. It would drain me. It would just, I'd be like, you know, at some point you got to stop. And she would feel rejected because she wants more than I can give. And, and that's, again, neither one of us is wrong. That's just a kind of a personality mismatch that I don't know that either person can change, if that makes sense. It, it, yeah, I can change how often I text. Um, I actually had somewhat of a similar issue with my best friend. And yeah. Maybe I, I, I've improved on that. And yeah. And I think that too. Yeah, yeah. And there is, there's two things going on there. There is uh, feedback from people you care about and want to stay connected with telling you their boundaries. Uh, this is too much for me and you modifying your approach. And again, it needs to be a good match. If 
if you feel the need to text more than someone is comfortable receiving, there are, yeah, there are two choices you change, uh, or they, I guess three choices you change, they change, or you guys agree you can't make it work and you go, go your separate ways. It's kind of a three, th three possible paths uh, forward. And just in terms of, uh, you know, regular life. We get feedback from people all the time. We have friends and, and, and other folks set boundaries. Um, and, uh, we have to gauge, are we, are we comfortable personally with those boundaries? Are we willing to sacrifice a little bit of what we want to accommodate their expressed desires as well? Um, and sometimes you can't, sometimes you can't, sometimes it's too much. Um, and, and that, as I say, that's the that's the idea of no one's really wrong. It's just these personal preferences. Um, you know, it's like uh, you're going to buy a pizza and uh, somebody hates anchovies, like I like me, like no anchovies on my pizza. And you're like, man, I really love anchovies. I'm like, then we need to get separate pizzas. I can't have anchovies on half a pizza. It's going to get the oils and the smell all over it. And you know, so I couldn't share a pizza with someone who wanted anchovies, which turned my stomach. I wouldn't be able to eat it at all. So there's no compromise on that one. Uh, it's just not something I'm able to do. Um, I feel like I'm rambling, but is that kind of making sense? Yeah, it does. Yeah. And so that's good though. You were able to say, make a compromise with this, your best friend and tone down your texting a little bit. And that helped preserve the, 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 the communication, like the, the fact of staying connected was more important than how often you reach out. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you had more to say about that or, uh, um, and the reason I can't let go is that I, I can't live with that regret and depression for the rest of my life. Yeah, no, no. I wanted to come back around to that. That's a good, that's a good point. Um, you're looking back on having made a, a, uh, I mean, the words that come to mind are like a hidden mistake, a mistake you were unaware of at the time. Uh, you didn't realize that you'd s screwed up something. And now there's this kind of intense desire to fix it. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. And, and, and in your mind, the, the cons, oh my goodness, the cat's tearing up my, my fan. Okay. That's fine. We're going to leave it alone. Um, that, that is probably what's bothering you more than even the loss of the connection is the idea that you are so strongly desiring to, to fix a past mistake. And, and in your mind, the way to do it is to get their forgiveness and have them come back as a friend. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, you, I mean, in uh, psychology, they, they talk about closure and closure can mean, you know, it's like closing a door, the, the end of uh, reaching the end of something that seems open-ended or never ending. Um, so what you probably need, again, I'm not giving advice. This is not counseling or therapy, but uh, you need some kind of closure on that and you need some way to address that specifically within you, that, that feeling of regret and sadness and, and depression, as you said, over this mistake that can't be undone. It, it, uh, like, um, you know, the internet concept, what is seen cannot be unseen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. This is like behaviors that have been behaved cannot be unbehaved. They, it happened. That's a thing. It's in the past. You can't, you can apologize for it. You can take it back. You can say, I didn't mean it. I didn't realize it. I'm sorry, but you can't make it unhappen. So what you got to do is, is, or what, what, what I would do if I were in the same situation is to find a way to, ah, what is it? What, what's the word for that? There's a, um, internalize it, uh, incorporate it, make it a part of you that this happened, that, that you don't like it, that you don't want to repeat it. Cause sometimes the only thing you can do with negative emotions is use that as motivation to never repeat the mistake and do better in the future. And it's sometimes that act of commitment to a new path that helps dissolve the tension and fear and pain of those past events. Is that kind of making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's a more complicated process and I, I'm not using the right words or enough words for it, but but the idea of unresolved past trauma, say, 
is is it's unresolved because you haven't internalized it yet. You haven't made it a part of you in, in a meaningful way that gives you a path forward. It's it, it's a uh, it's some some place your your heart and your mind and your soul is stuck in the past, and you've got to kind of pull yourself forward into the now and say, here's here's my future orientation based on that past motivation. I'm using a lot of big words, but uh, it's it's kind of like coming to coming to terms with it and and choosing a way forward. You got to get your brain and your focus out of the past, turn it around and look into the future and say, now what am I going to do? And making that decision about how to meaningfully incorporate that past mistake into who you want to be, who who you're moving towards becoming uh, changes in behavior that will help dissipate that, that stress and anxiety or it should theoretically. (laughs) I, uh, you know, I think this has bothered you enough that, and it's a source of ongoing stress to the degree that uh, have you considered talking to a school counselor or, or do you have a a real life, uh, you know, a, a therapist, uh, situation going on? Yeah, but mm, that doesn't really help me. Have you talked to your to your therapist about this issue? Yeah, my mom made me mention oh. that in February, and when okay. all the stuff just came up, I did. Gotcha. Have you spoken with that person recently, or did you have just a few sessions and stop going? They keep blocking me, but I haven't made any contact with with them since everything happened last month. Okay, so the you said the therapist keeps reaching out for another appointment, but you haven't oh. res- responded. Well, I thought you meant that we got a no appointment schedule um from in a few weeks. Okay, okay. I think uh, I think this dream and maybe even this conversation is something to share with that therapist. I think we're getting really close to the core of, um, you know, this dream came back to you to remind you that something is important, that something needs to be seen and dealt with. And it's got a lot of elements of wishful thinking, but it's also bringing your attention back to the core struggle, the stress that's on your mind currently, what's, what's occupying your attention and your background processing. Um, yeah, and I think finding a way to resolve this is going to be key. Uh, th- there's a good chance you're spending a lot of mental energy on this that would be better spent elsewhere. And what I mean is that is not that this isn't important, but that I think that if you did actually spend more mental energy on other things, this would start to feel less important. Does, does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's there's kind of a sense of obsessing and dwelling, dwelling on the past and and living in doubt, fear, uncertainty, that kind of thing. Um, and there's a an active process of choosing to focus on other things and, and choosing is, is the thing by choice. I'm going to set this aside. I'm going to let it be and I'm going to focus my energies, my attention and draw, most importantly, I'd say draw strength, draw self-satisfaction, draw a sense of purpose. Um, what, what am I saying? You know, uh, build yourself up in focusing on other things that give you a sense of accomplishing something. Is that making sense? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the more you do that, the more you have, the more you diversify your personality. Like you are not simply this one person who is completely dependent on whether or not someone else likes me. I am all these other things that I do and and I can do and skills and, and interests. You diversify that and build it up and invest more time and energy in that. And that as that becomes more important to your sense of who you are, the other stuff, the past mistakes are, become so much easier to, to let go. And, and I think that'll be part of the process too. 
again, these are just ideas, suggestions. I, I think definitely bringing up this whole issue and spending some time on it with the, with the therapist is going to be a good idea. Um, hopefully they can help you come up with a game plan. Uh, for, okay. What does it look like to, to do this? How do, uh, how do I, how do I make that happen? I don't know. What do you think? I don't know. Okay. Yeah. You don't have to have an answer right away. Um, hopefully most importantly out of all this, uh, I would hope that you get ideas to consider that you get possibilities set before you and you can pick and choose. This is all up to you. You have complete, uh, you know, control over this process. Uh, you get to choose what to do. You may not be able to control your feelings, but you can always control your actions and your choices and say, you know, I feel this way, but I got to do this for reasons or I feel this way. So yeah, that's what I'm interested in. That's where I'm going to go. Um, that's, that's important to, to know that you have that personal power to make choices. Uh, and that, uh, what is he eating? My cat's going nuts. Oh, he's, in, he's in my paper shredder box. Shredding, he's shredding the paper for me with his, hey, go for it. Um, well, you know, I think we've talked for a long time and I've talked way too much. I'm sorry about that. Um, was there more, do you have more questions or, or ideas that you wanted to share? Uh, elements of the dream to go back and discuss? I forgot we were actually talking about a dream here for a minute. No. Do you feel pretty good about our talk? Like we've, we've covered some important information and then you've gained at least some new, new things to consider. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Dreams are, uh, as much as a window into the subconscious, they're also a door through which we can enter into a conversation about important parts of your life that, uh, um, need to be examined is kind of, kind of what dreams do for us. It sh shines a light on things and says, Hey, pay attention to this. This is important. So, um, yeah, you feel good, feel good about it. Uh, you want to wrap it up and uh, let you get on with your day. Yeah. Okay. Well, I'll go ahead and uh, end the stream. And then you, you hang out with me just a, a few minutes after I, uh, after I say goodbye to folks and stop the recording. So I'll just say, uh, thank you friends uh, for joining us for another episode of dreamscapes. Please like share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And, uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks again, Katie. You're welcome.